Is Weird Al gonna have to yank a Vic? A ghost story is written and directed by David Lowry and stars Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara. After his own death, a ghost returns to his home and follows around his grieving wife. A lot of stuff does actually happen in this movie, but I don't want to describe it because it's better to watch it without knowing. And if you're wondering, yes, this movie's protagonist is Casey Affleck with a bedsheet over him. David Lowry has had a promising career so far with the indie darling Ain't Them Body Saints. Ain't Them Body Saints. Ain't Body Saints. Them body Saints. Them body Saints. And the sleeper hit remake Pete's Dragon. And this is very much a movie that a filmmaker makes in this point of their career that solidifies exactly who they are as a filmmaker. Just because I made a Disney movie doesn't mean I ain't got no art. I got, I'm all full of art. I'm, I'm arting all over the place. Half early Malick and half current Lynch, a ghost story is a tiny film that feels expansive and you feel like you're in the care of a knowing filmmaker. Larry lingers on things for a long time and it feels like we're supposed to be there. The scene where Rooney Mara has to identify her husband's body, we're there outside of the room and just watching it happen even after she leaves we're just still on that shot. There's a scene soon after which, I kid you not, Rooney Mara eats an entire pie for like five minutes. The aspect ratio and the color palette make it seem like it's the first movie ever shot on Instagram, but that's not a knock on DP Andrew Droz Palermo. Every shot feels meticulously crafted. It's very much a movie where if you freeze any frame, you're gonna want to take that frame and put it up on your wall. It's very hard to comment on the acting of the film because this isn't very much of an actor's film. The actors are just kind of like set pieces for Larry to move around and do and emote whatever he feels like and they all do a very good job. When your lead just won the Best Actor Oscar and you decide to put a sheet over him for the whole movie, you know you're in the right hands. The ghost, for the most part, stays in the home he shared with his wife, and I don't want to say too much about what happens, but even after his wife isn't in the picture anymore, he stays in the home as it becomes inhabited by others. You feel the importance of the location and everything around it. The titular ghost story isn't about the person who's passed, it's about everything that life encompasses. I was expecting this movie to be like a meditation on death and grief, and it is, but it's also so much more than that, and that's what makes this movie so special. It's about the enormity of life and existence, and mostly just takes place in one location, technically. The film has barely any dialogue and uses mostly mood and location and setting and tone to tell its story. It's wonderful, but there's one sour note this movie hits that kind of infuriated me. It's a scene at a party in which a guy essentially mansplains the meaning of life to people. I don't know who this scene is for, the trajectory of the movie was leading me down a path in which I knew what was going on, and I don't need the guy from Old Joy to explain purpose to me. The scene is like shoving cinnamon down your throat. Other than that, great film, loved it. This, and along with Asayas's personal shopper, solidifies 2017 for me as the year of the ghost. And I don't know about you, but... Bustin' makes me feel good. Four and a half stars. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is the new channel. Subscribe to this channel, please. Uh, I'm probably not going to post much on the other channel, not like of this stuff. So if you want to see more of this stuff, stay on this channel and subscribe to it. Thank you so much. Um, I love films. It's, they're good. They're good stuff. It's good stuff, dude. Watch that and watch this. Bye. Them body sink.